Hello and welcome to this mini masterclass on using deep narratives to drive powerful social change. I'm delighted to be joined by Ruth Taylor, who is an expert in narrative change. Ruth advises organisations on shifting harmful narratives, and she also works with the Common Cause Foundation, which looks to embed shared cultural values in society to bring about social and environmental change. Ruth is an activist and a campaigner, having worked with the likes of Amnesty International, Child.org and Restless Development. A massive welcome to you, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Well, could you start by telling us your top three tips for using deep narratives to drive powerful social change? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my first tip, my first top tip is to um, get aware of the deep narratives you might be activating or reinforcing in your work. Uh, My second top tip is that narrative change is about constructing new narratives, but also really importantly about promoting them so that they become powerful. And my top Uh, My third top tip is to change a narrative. You need to build a broad church um, and act in solidarity with a really broad range of causes. Brilliant. Thanks, Ruth. So your first tip was around getting aware of deep narratives that you might be activating or reinforcing. Could you tell us a bit more about that and specifically what deep narratives are? So when we're talking about narrative, we're referring to really commonly understood ideas, beliefs that people have um, that we use to help us to interpret and make sense of the world that we live in. Um, When we're talking about deep narrative specifically, um, we're, we're bringing to mind some of the really deeply embedded cultural narratives um, that we have. Um, and often these kind of deep narratives are, are invisible. They're fairly unconscious to us. They're really bound up with our with our values as people and as, as communities and societies. Um, so a deep narrative could be something like growth is good. Um, and that you can imagine how that can undersit numerous different social and environmental issues there's something about us being uh, just really conscious of those narratives that might be undersitting our work so that we can ensure that the changes that we are campaigning for are not going to be reversed they kind of have the cultural change happening uh, alongside so that they become really embedded in in the world that, that we uh, that we live in brilliant thank you And for your second tip, you said that narrative change is about constructing and promoting new narratives. So how might campaigners and activists go about building power around a new narrative? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, For me, narrative change is 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 really that sort of two part, uh, two part project, one of construction, one of promotion. So um, the, the first Uh, the first kind of action is always to be able to identify the narrative that we want to be replaced. And uh, I think where we normally trip up here is that we might identify a fairly surface level narrative. So maybe something, um, if we're thinking about uh, migration or um, kind of refugee rights, we can very quickly identify really harmful narratives that circulate in our country um, and, and, and think, okay, well, that's that's not that's not helpful to our cause. We want to replace it, but we also need to have an eye to what some of those deeper narratives are uh, that might be um, giving durability and um, uh, and kind of deeper meaning to a more surface level narrative. So, um, being able to identify the old narratives that we want to be replacing, and then considering what new narrative we want to be able to to come in to take its place and to build power for. So that's really important. And then this second stage around promotion is really the question of how do you get this new narrative out there? How do you build power behind a new narrative? Um, and and this is about dissemination. What you would normally think of in terms of, of um, uh, public engagement or kind of getting a piece of communications out into the public. So yes, people can be aware of it. It can be a, around us um, in in the comms that we're seeing. But really, narrative is so powerful because it's experiential. Um, it goes beyond language and words. It's something that we um, we come into contact with in our day to day lived experience. 
in in the culture that we live in. So, you know, as I walk down the high street, I'm having a narrative experience. Certain narratives are being reinforced to me in that uh, process of kind of walking down the high street. And so there's something about how do you create opportunities and experiences for people to feel this narrative in action? Brilliant. And your third tip was around building a broad coalition or a broad church and acting in solidarity with a range of causes. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, this is super important and not something that we as campaigners uh, in, in our kind of current, the way that civil society is currently structured, do particularly well. Um, and partly that's because we're so siloed. Um, you know, we have different uh we have people working on homelessness over here and we have people working on climate change over here and you know unless you have um a particularly kind of policy related reason to be talking to one another you won't necessarily be be speaking so we as organizations now as as movements of people who care about social and environmental change are never going to shift power to um, an alternative narrative by ourselves uh, no organisation in the world is is that powerful um, and that culturally embedded. So it, it requires support. It requires uh, broad coalitions of, uh, of different actors coming together. Um, when I'm talking about a broad church, I'm thinking, OK, well, how do you work with um, how do you work journalists? How do you work uh, with local community leaders? How do you work with faith communities? How do you work with football clubs? How do you work with theatres, etc.? It's all the places where people gather and live their lives. Those are the spaces where culture is often defined. Um, and so how do we invite those people in to help us shift the narrative? Wow, these have been some brilliant tips and examples on driving social change through narrative. So thank you, Ruth. As you know, we're asking everyone who does a mini masterclass to share some reading, watching or listening recommendations. Could you tell us yours? Um, I, I really recommend a blog piece um, that was written by three incredible narrative thinkers who at the time were working for PERC, who's the Public Interest Research Centre. Um, they wrote a blog called The Narratives We Need. Um, it's a fantastic blog. Um, I come back to it really frequently um, in my work. Uh, it's really accessible and I think a brilliant way if, if, if this kind of conversation has piqued your interest, it's a really brilliant place to start. Um, and uh, if I may, I would also uh, include my um, paper that I wrote last year that's called Transforming Narrative Waters. Um, and this that, that paper was very much about trying to think a little bit deeper when it came to narrative and uh, to maybe zoom in on, on some of the ideas around deep narratives, um, which, which don't get quite as much um, uh, kind of spotlight as, as more kind of cause specific narratives. So those would be my two recommendations. Brilliant. Well, it has been a real pleasure having you on the mini masterclass series, Ruth. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.